popping into Coco Head Cafe here in Kaimuki to meet with Leanne Wong, Top Chef finalist season one, as well as the Super Bear Advising culinary producer. She is the owner of this cafe and we're excited to meet with her. All right, come on in with us. Aloha, e komamai. My name is Leanne Wong. I am the chef owner here at Coco Head Cafe in the Kaimuki neighborhood of Honolulu on the lovely island of Oahu. And we specialize in island style creative brunch seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. So if you're in the neighborhood and you're hungry, come on in and try some of our Coco Moco, our cornflake French toast, or maybe even our breakfast bibimbap. We have something for everyone and we look forward to seeing you. Aloha. I mean, this is probably the most like aesthetic food I've ever seen. I know it tastes good as well. Thanks. Um, what, um, what, what started your passion for food? Uh, really boredom, interestingly <laughs> enough. Uh, I've worked in restaurants since I was 15, doing front of the house and bartending and serving. Um, and then I moved to New York City after high school to study fashion design. And I did that for a few years before I realized I was just very not into it. And um, my friends, I started cooking for my friends, and they're the ones who suggested I should go to culinary. School. And so I kind of just fell into it and uh, my mom was like, my parents were at first not very supportive, which I thought they would be because my mom's a very like avid like home cook, um, but she's like, you're totally crazy, you know, like you're going to be a cook the rest of your life, you're going to sweat in the kitchen, and you're never going to make anything out of yourself, and I was just like, oh, that's terrible, mom, but in the end, they, um, they, <laughs> they helped me uh, go to culinary school in New York City, I stayed in New York, I went to French Culinary Institute, um, and I had this really sort of amazing, uh, varied path thus far, I've been in the industry almost 20 years, and uh, I've been super lucky to have worked. I think my first job was under uh, Marcus Samuelson at Aquavie, and then I opened up John George's uh, Restaurant 66. Um, I went on to work at the French Culinary Institute as their executive chef of events and uh, continuing ed. So I coordinated our, our guest chef demonstration program, and um, I worked with pretty much every chef, well known chef around the world, from Daniel Ballou to Thomas Keller to Ferran Adria to. Um, Wow. You know, the TV chef, TV personalities, and then our deans, Jacques Pepin, Alain Saint, Jacques Torres, Andre Soltner. So I worked with all of these greats, so every day of work, for me, it was like an education. Um, and I just was just a sponge that got to absorb all these different sort of culinary techniques and viewpoints and, and different cultural sort of dishes. Um, and with my travel bug, I've traveled the world cooking everywhere, and uh, it landed me here in Hawaii. Wow. Um, you know, I did it television for a little while with Top Chef, um, was cast on the first season, ended up being their supervising culinary producer for the next four years, uh, won an Emmy, and then said like, okay, now it's time to can leave this, and um, you know, went back to do on-camera work, so I did six seasons of Unique Eats for Food Network and Cooking Channel, um, done Iron Chef, Chopped, all that, all that stuff, but I mean, at the end of the day, I was looking for something to settle into, and Hawaii was calling, and I actually have family here. The first time I came out here as an adult was to film season two finale over my Kaloa, the Big Island, and um, after the production, I flew over to Oahu and reconnected with my family over here, my Ohana, and interestingly enough, uh, later on, my TV show would come film here, and I would meet my extended Ohana here, uh, chefs like Mark Noguchi, uh, Daniel Anthony, um, Ed Kenny, Andrew Lay, um, all these guys I met through the food television, and I got started coming back here often, I started doing pop-ups and cooking with these guys on a regular basis, and I mean, my extended culinary Ohana here is incredible, the, the community really welcomed me with open arms, uh, eternally grateful for that, and you know, in turn, like, Coco Head Cafe is, is built for the community, it, it was definitely 
Uh, my partner, Kevin Haney, he owns 12th Avenue Grill. It was originally in this space, and he moved it around the corner to a larger space, and we wanted, we wanted to do a breakfast place, and I said, well, I have a brunch co concept ready to go. I had wanted to move here for so long, so I had like six different menus. Yeah. <laughs> ready to go, ready to go. And, um, and this was it, so he just let me run with it, and Coco Head Cafe was born, and you know, almost five years later, we're, we're going strong. And it feels kind of like it's always been here. Yeah. That's that's it's supposed kind of, to yeah. happen. It, it really does. Yeah. It feels like it's just been, yeah. like, you know, everything's kind of grown up around it. And, um, yeah. So what, um, I mean, we obviously have these trays here. I mean, yep. what would you, if you come to Coco Hit Cafe, what do you order? These are like, these, honestly, these two yeah. dishes are our most iconic dishes. Yeah. Our Coco Moco and our Corn Flake yeah. And, you know, originally it was supposed to be all about the pancakes. Like, I have a big yeah. photo of pancakes. Up on the wall, yeah. but um, I'm a this French was, toast girl. This was so. like a fluke because I, I this was a dish I had developed in New York City, and um, it was my answer to soggy French toast. <laughs> and it was yeah, really it was really inspired by my childhood and Burger King French toast. Oh. <laughs> this sticks. Do you remember that? You I remember were, the greasy, crunchy, delicious, buttery. Those were amazing. Yes. 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 So the this, syrup in the little container. Yeah. So this is a more grown-up version. Um, one of the things that we focus on here is utilizing local ingredients, and so um, this is made with uh, Punaluku sweet bread. Oh, nice! It's coated in a, soaked in a coconut milk, Hawaiian vanilla custard, coated in uh, corn flakes. We have candied bacon. Uh, the bacon has got three different kinds of sugars and uh, three different kinds of pepper wow. in there. Uh, and then a gelato, a frosted flake gelato from our neighbors at Via Gelato. They make custom for us. And then we have a creamy butt pepper. And it's like this kind of like sweet, salty, hot, cold. Perfect blend. Perfect blend. It's my answer to Saudi Amen. Amen. And then this is our uh, Coco Moco, which is our version of a Loco Moco. And you know, what sets ours apart is that we're using 100% local Hawaii grass fed beef. Um, it's served over a crispy garlic rice skillet, so we do use these cast iron skillets to get that nice, like, kogi crust on the rice that you're always looking for. Uh, a local sunny up egg and tempura fried kimchi, and our gravy is made from scratch every day. It's a vegetarian gravy using uh, local mushrooms and shiitake mushrooms. Ooh, I'm a mushroom fan. Yeah, so this little number over here is our breakfast bibimbap. This was inspired by me eating breakfast at like 3 in the morning in Cape Town all the time so <laughs> K-Town in New York is open 24 hours so you can go at 7 a.m. and get a, bo uh, get a bowl of like oxtail bone soup or a bibimbap mm -hmm. and I wanted to make it breakfasty so we have uh, a meat mix of Portuguese sausage ham and bacon um, sauteed local anchoy soy marin shiitake mushrooms uh, local kimchi local fried egg sauteed local bean sprouts and carrots all on garlic rice um, little kochujang and you mix it up and just people love it so it's kind of got uh, that classic flavor you know understandably so it's perfect balance yeah there's a little sesame leaf and uh, sesame oil in there just to give it fragrance with a futokake um, action yeah little um, yeah nori and sesame on top and green onion and then um, this is one of our uh, best poo-poos and I think you know what kind of sets us apart from most breakfast places is that everything here is meant to be shared. I think one of those things is yeah. breakfast brunch is so territorial, like this is my <laughs> plate of food and that's your plate of food. And yeah. um, I think here, you know, it's like people come, they look at the menu like, I don't know what to order. And we're just like, get it all, share it. And, you know, we have boxes, you can take it home. <laughs> um, and more often than not, people share and they're able to finish it. So, um, our breakfast bruschetta, we um, do a house-made uh, Japanese style rusk, which is like a caramelized toast. We made, made ours with um, uh, butter, sugar, uh, Hawaiian vanilla. Uh, there is a thickened Greek yogurt with uh, toasted mac nuts and local honey. Um, so right now we have Christmas berry honey. We use um, a local honey company and usually we have either mac nut honey or lehua honey or rainbow blossom honey. So uh, our honey she knows is. She knows all of our local action. Well, I'm I so mean, impressed. Again, we're very, very focused on you. I love it. I love it. We have a sort of local fruits and fresh wines. So this is just a nice our version of the yogurt. And I think you know one of the things that sets us apart is that we try not to do what everybody else is doing. Yeah. You know? and, and if we're doing something familiar, we try and elevate it. It's fine dining in a very casual setting. And it just looks so 
like beautifully healthily balanced in my opinion. I think yeah. it's you know, I mean healthy. The, well people don't leave hungry, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is you know, local ingredients important to you? Local ingredients is hugely important right. to us um, for both sustainability um, and, and really the future of food Hawaii, food sovereignty and food security. It's, it's super important and we work with all local producers, farmers, um, you know, even showcasing local products like adobo loco, hot sauce, chili great, pepper water. Great story behind this by the way. And um, we are just, you know, committed to um, being part of this community and supporting the community. Yeah. <laughs> we can't wait to eat it if she's going to allow us to eat it. But uh, if you're if you're in the area in Kaimuki, if you're visiting Oahu, please come check out this spot. I mean, Leanne's is so you know hospitable for us. Coco Head Cafe, you got to come check out all the food. I mean, it would really be a shame if you came to Oahu and you didn't try her, her, her cooking. Phenomenal, absolutely, yeah. and just awesome human being. <laughs> So, such a great, great story, you know. No, we really, um, you know, we want to support local business and we're really excited to be here, so I really want to thank you for awesome. it. Yeah, well, really enjoy, enjoy, the, it. Yeah. enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> One last thank thing, you. so what are, you, what are your thoughts on Kaimuki? Why, why would someone be drawn to Kaimuki? Uh, Kaimuki is such a great neighborhood, for one. This is uh, originally a business district, and what you see now is just this wide assortment of great restaurants, amazing shopping. Um, there are parks, you know, you can walk back into the valley if you want. We're kind of in the middle of everything. So you have Kahala over here, you got Diamond Head right behind us, you got Pololo behind us over here, um, you know, uh, Market City down below. And so it's it's sort of like you can walk the entire neighborhood. There's a ton of things to do. There's parks, there's shopping, there's entertainment. Yeah. There's amazing dining, obviously, from morning, noon, and night. Um, and, you know, it's just a cool place to be. Kaimuki, yo. Yeah. Kaimuki. <laughs> Team Kaimuki! Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, thank you so much. This is uh, cool. Enjoy, please. <laughs>